What up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review of Dirty John, episode 3. So, this episode, we get a lot of background information on John. The whole episode is sort of a flash back and forth between the parallel between his first wife and what's going on with um, Donna. Deborah, Donna, whatever. But I'm not going to do the back and forth. I'm just going to give it to you. I'm going to give you one story, then I'm going to give you the other story so we know where we are. But I'll start with the first wife. So we see how he met his first wife. His first wife, they met at a bar. His wife was already an anesthesiologist. It's like... There's another level, it's like an anesthesiologist that went to medical school, and then there's like an anesthesiologist that's like a nursing level. Correct me if I'm wrong. But his wife was already an anesthesiologist. Um, and they met, and she actually got him into a program. So he was actually an anesthesiologist um, at one point. She got him a job and everything, and we, sh we see them getting married, and everything is all lovey-dovey. We see his his groomsmen, and if you listen to his groomsmen talk, they were like, we've only known him a few years, and we were really shocked to find out he was getting married, and, you know, all we're going to say is, you know, uh, you know, watch your back. Or, I mean, it, it was like, if that was my husband's best man at the wedding, I'd be sitting there giving him the side eye, like, what? <laughs> you know, like, what the hell is she talking about? So... But then we sort of fast forward two years, cause next a few years later, cause next thing you know, they're married with two kids, and you know, wifey think everything is good. She think we happy, we, we're happily in love. She ends up having a conversation with a neurosurgeon. Come to find out, the neurosurgeon was sleeping with her man for the last six months. Uh, no, it was more than that. I think she said eighteen months, like a minute. They had been messing with each other for a minute. So she goes to confront him. And his response was basically, I. She was like, what you mean? She was like, so this is what we're doing now? He was like, look, I don't know what I'm doing. He started talking about how this woman makes so much money and how she does surgeries two days a week. And I mean, all, and she was like, so what you trying to tell me? Like, are you upgrading? And he was like, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something. I said, what the fuck? Then we see where... um. At work, he gets caught stealing drugs. One of the other nurses saw him steal drugs, and she reported him to the nursing board. And she told the wife. She went to his wife because they're friends. And she said, look, I saw John. You know, and she explained exactly what he did, how he slipped the drugs in his pocket. She's like, I saw him do it. She said, and it was so smooth. That wasn't his first time. It's just the first time somebody caught him. She said, but I have to let you know that I did go to the nursing board. She said, look, you have other people in your family that are nurses. Like, you have other, your whole family are in the medical field and you know how this works she was like if the nursing board feels like you are complacent or that you knew what was going on or that you're hiding drugs in the house you could lose your kids like this this investigation could blow up so i just want to let you know i want to be really honest with you about what's going on but yeah i called the nursing board and you know you might want to go on and take care of that so she goes home honey she is searching the house high and low she finds the drugs. Let me tell you, this mofo done hid the drugs in the kids' toys. Dirty. I mean, needles, because he's um, actually taking, like, he's shooting himself up. So he got needles. He got the vials. Oh, my gosh. It's just so. Now she's at that point where she's like, okay, I know I know he's cheating on me. Now he's a drug addict. And he's about to lose his license, which means he's going to lose his job. Now what do I do? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, how do I? How do I handle this? And we see her one night uh, call his mother. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I forgot to tell y'all that part. When they were dating, when he was getting ready to marry his first wife, he told her how horrible his family was. And she, he was like, under no circumstances are you ever to reach out to my family. They're horrible people. They'll bring you in. They'll drag you down. He was like, promise me. Promise me you will not call them. Promise me you will not contact them. She was like, I promise. He said, no, see, because what's going to happen is we're going to have kids. And when we have kids, you're going to look at the babies and you're going to say, oh, wouldn't it be nice? Excuse me, if they knew their grandparents, if they knew their aunts and uncles, he said, you're going to want to contact my family. But I am telling you now, under no circumstances are you to call my parents, to call my family, because they are horrible, horrible people. So, of course, she was like, okay, cool. All right, no problem. Well, now that stuff is starting to hit the fan, of course, she's thinking, I know my husband's a liar. I know he's a drug addict. Maybe he's, everything he told me about his family ain't what it's all cracked out to be, cracked up to be. Let me call 
So she called the mother. And you could hear the mother. The mother said, she said, who's this? She says this. She she said another woman's name first, and then she said the lady. She said no, this is Tammy. That's his wife's name. And she said, oh no. She said, if you're calling me, then that means everything went bad. She said I was really hoping that this time everything would be good this time, but if you're calling me, that means everything's bad. I said, oh my goodness. So this is a pattern. So he says, um, she says. Is he still on drugs? Oh, he's been dealing with the drugs. Did you? I mean, she starts like going off about all these different things. Like she's telling her. So now she's got confirmation. Like if she didn't have it before, she's got extra confirmation now. So what do you do? You know what I mean? What do you do? Then she reached out to his friends from the wedding, from law school, because John had gone to law school, told her that he had gone to law school. Now, he flunked out of law school. He was in law school all of one semester. Because, you know, in law school, if you don't get a certain GPA, you won't, the second, they will kick your ass out. Like, they're not going to keep letting you just, especially the more reputable ones. You know what I mean? They're not going to keep letting you sit there with C's and D's. So, he was in law school. He was enrolled for one year. He'd actually gone to college and everything. So, he was in law school for one year, one semester, and had these roommates that he had moved in with. Those were the guys that were at, that were his best men and his groomsmen at the funeral. I mean, at the Lord, the funeral, at the wedding. Come to find out, they didn't really know him either. They were like, well, look, we were roommates in college. You know, all we knew is that he was a scammer. And she was like, what? He said, oh, yeah. He would get business cards made up um, saying that he was a roofer and he could do uh, roofing and tiling and all these different things. And he would scam old people. He would, you know, give the older, elder, older people his cards. He would get a deposit for, de for materials and stuff. And then um, he just wouldn't show back up. She was like, what? And this dude is saying it like it's no big deal. He's, like, smiling and shit. I'm like, aren't you a lawyer? Like, that's, isn't it an ethical thing with this? Like, that you, you laughing about it? He said, she said, um, he, she said, so that's where he got his nickname, Dirty John. Because at the wedding, they were saying, yeah, his nickname was Dirty John, but we can't tell you why. She, he said, well, yeah, you know that, you know, and then the credit card. She said, the credit card, what? Like, it, like her head is getting ready to explode. He didn't, you know, he got credit cards, all these different credit cards. Then the man said, you know, and... One of the roommates said that they saw him jump in front of cars a couple of times so he could scam a couple of hundred dollars off the drivers. Like, you know, when they would, when they get ready to come to a stop sign, he would just jump on the car. So, like, he knew he wasn't going to get hurt real bad, but bad enough that, you know, he could be like, look, you ain't got to call the insurance company. Just give me $500. Look, we don't have to call the insurance company. Just give me $300. Like, scamming people. I said, this, this. So, she is just like, I don't know what to do. I'm just beside myself. So... The last straw I'm gonna make sure I'm going in the right order. The last straw was, you know, like the lady told her that she was calling the licensing boy. So she gets in her car one night, he jumps in the car, he said, Look, I just got one question to ask you. She said, What? She said, um, who called the licensing board? She said, I'm not gonna tell you who called. He said, Well, if you won't tell me, then it must have been you. She said, It wasn't me. But I'm not going to tell you who it was. He said, well, I have a high authority that it was you. She was like, I don't give a damn what your high authority told you. It wasn't me. I'm not going to tell you who it was. Get out of my car. So, next thing you know, she done put him out the house, changed the locks, everything. Now he banging on the door. She said, what do you want? He said, let me in. Let me get my stuff. She said, are you looking for your drugs? Oh, I threw all those away. I got rid of the drugs. So, if that's what you're here for, don't you worry about it. So, he, he, like, he's banging like he's getting ready to bang the door down. Honey, she grabbed a knife. I said, I know that's right. She grabbed herself a knife ready for him to come through that door. And, um... He went away. He, you know, he squirreled off. You could hear the tire screeching and everything like that. And then he calls her and he tells her, he said, you know why I got this big smile on my face? She said, why, John? Why? She, he said, because I got something for you. I got something for you. And just so you know that when you get what I got for you, I want you to remember that it was me. It was me. So he's threatening her, but he ain't come right out and say nothing that could get him caught up but it was enough that if it were me i would feel threatened and i would be afraid like what you mean you got something for me and when that happens i want you to remember it was me like i would be nervous too i'd be scared okay so that's the first wife right now let's fast forward back to uh deborah 
in this situation. So remember last week we left off with her going through all his paperwork um, in this drawer. She took pictures of all of it. It was restraining orders. It was rap sheets. It was, you know, he's a dog.com. You know, all kinds of stuff. So she ended up going to a lawyer. And even while she's talking to the lawyer, she's trying to find excuses. She's going to say, she's going to ask the lawyer, well, do you think it's him? The lawyer was like, what you mean, do you think it's him? He, she said, well, I mean, couldn't it be somebody else with just the same last name? She was like, I guess, but she said, you know, I've seen everything. And because she was like, well, you know, his wife, because remember, he kept telling, uh, I was going to say Connie, that's her, the actress's name. He kept telling her that his wife was so horrible and she was just this horrible person and she had done all these horrible things to him. And that's why his credit was messed up. And that's why this was messed up. And that was messed up. And um, he said, she said, um, she said, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the lawyer was like, well, you know, I've seen a lot in family court. You know, she was like, I don't put anything past anybody. I've really seen a lot going to family court. She said, let me, I'm going to, you know, let me, um, I'm going to email these documents to myself so I can do some more research and I'll, I'll get back to you and I'll let you know what's going on. She said, okay. But mind you, she still don't want to believe that this man is not who he says he is. She's looking for excuses, looking for a way out. So then she's at work, and her daughter comes in, Veronica. Now, remember, the nephew last week had confronted John, and John told him, we're married, and this, is that, and the other. So Veronica comes in, and she said, did you marry him? And her mother, she said, yeah. She said, you know. She said, well, you know how I know. Because last week, when Toby came over to the house to apologize to you, John told him that, that y'all were married now, and that he was a piece of scum, and that he's glad that, um, his mother got shot, that the father shot him in the head, shot the mother in the head before he had a chance to see it. And, you know, of course, Connie is like, oh, my God, like, well, Deborah, you know, she's sitting there like, oh, my goodness, like, I can't believe, you know, like, she's, again, just like the first wife, her head is starting to get big. So, the daughter, remember, the daughter, daughter had gotten a private detective, so the daughter went back to the private detective, the private, the private detective showed her all of um all of his charges and showed her that he had burglary he had restraining orders he had stalking like he had all of these things against him so now the daughter is really really worried about her mom the lawyer in the interim the lawyer then called the mom back and called uh deborah back and said look it's all him he's been in jail in two separate states all of this paperwork that you found it is him it has been confirmed that it is him she said, and the other thing that's been confirmed is that he is, that he sues everybody. He has sued every lawyer that has ever tried to file anything against him. He's even sued his own lawyers after they've, um, after they've um, defended him so he wouldn't have to pay them. She said, and I'm just going to be honest with you, this is something I just can't get involved in. So her lawyer was like, yeah, I can't. She was like, so that's just it. She was like, look, I, she said, but my suggestion to you. Is that you get out of this. So then. She goes to. The safe deposit box. Remember that John got a safe deposit box. Because of all that cash that was in the house. So she goes to the safe deposit box. To check and see. Of course there ain't no cash in there. But the rings are in there. So passports, rings, some other marriage license. And stuff like that. But ain't no cash. So. I'm going to give, now Deborah is a dummy, but I'm going to give her credit for this. She was playing real cool and not letting on that she was getting any of this information or that she was finding any stuff out on him. She was playing it real cool when she was around him. So she came home that day and this fool done put an alert so that he knew she had gone to the safe deposit box because he had an alert on the the bank app or something like that to let him know whenever somebody went into the safe deposit box. So of course... The minute she walks in the door, he making tea. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, I remembered. I ran into a friend of mine who used to invest some money for me back when I was going through my divorce. And I gave him some of the cash out the box for him to invest in us. And I realized, invest for us. And I realized I hadn't had a chance to tell you about it. But I saw that you went to the safe deposit box today. She was like, you saw the look on her face was like, the fuck, you know. And she said, yeah. He said, so, um. You know, I'm and I'm sorry to tell you that I took the money out, but um, what were you doing at the safe deposit box? And she was quick. She was quick on it. She said, "Well, 
somehow Veronica found out that we're married and I figure we don't need to hide it anymore. So I went and got our rings and she had the rings with her. So she was smart. She, like I said now, she was dumb when it came to wanting to not be in love with this man anymore. But she wasn't so dumb that she didn't, um, when she started seeing stuff for what it was, she knew how to kind of uh, cover her back a little bit, I should say, for lack of a better word. So, then from there, she goes with Veronica. I want to make sure I'm going in the right order. Did something else happen? She goes with Veronica to um, her, um, the, the, the private detective that Veronica got. Something else happened. I can't remember what it was. Something else happened in between that, I believe, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, something else happened. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Y'all go watch it. Y'all see what I'm talking about. Um, she goes to the private detective that Veronica got. And the private detective, you know, laid it all out for her. I mean, the man's using different social security numbers, all kinds of stuff. And she said, um, well, what would you do? The private detective said, look, I can't tell you what to do. You have to decide what to do. She said, but, but if you were me, what would you do? She said, I... That you got to make that decision. She said, but I'm going to tell you this. She said, whatever you decide to do, you make sure that you are careful. She said that, um, he's dangerous. She said, I'm going to tell you that some of the people he has restraining orders against are cops. So anytime a cop is getting a restraining order against somebody, that lets you know that there's some shit there. Oh, that's what I missed. I knew I missed something. The, the other lawyer, before the, before the lawyer told her she couldn't take her case, she said, look, my suggestion to you is you do this. She said, one, she said, you need to move. You need to go somewhere. She said, um, if, you have, if, if you have a will, if you don't have a will, you need to make a will. And if he's on your will, she said, I would file for the annulment. And if he is on the will, you need to take him off the will. You need to let him know. That he's no longer on your will. He's no longer going to inherit any money. Because if you believe that maybe he is trying to plot something, you need to let him know it ain't nothing in it for him. Like take the take his um gotta take his motive away. She said, um, the other thing they found out is that he's buying pieces of a gun. But he's buying them in different places so that it doesn't look like because he's a felon. He ain't supposed to have a weapon. So it doesn't look like he's buying a gun. So she asked the lawyer, she said, Well, does he have all the pieces yet? She said, I couldn't tell you. So the lawyer told her, look, take him off your will. Make sure you, you know, if you make a new will so that he doesn't get anything. And let him know he can't get, that he has no, he's not inheriting anything from you. Let him know that. Now the private detective told her, she said, look, this my, she said, look, let me tell you what I would do. Since you want me, since you don't seem to be, like, since you don't seem to get it, let me tell you. She said, you need to leave. You need to move and you need to move somewhere where he can't find you. Don't go someplace you've been before move to hotels and don't stay at those hotels too long she said i would make sure that you know um that i'm protecting myself because he could have a gun she said and he's dangerous like this isn't a fluke he had you know cops have taken out restraining orders against him this ain't no fluke don't play with it so she's dazed like she is so done and she done went to the hospital with shortness of breath honey the, the daughter picked her up from that's when the daughter took her to the um detective daughter picked her up from the hospital she said i gotta go and um her daughter's like well what are you gonna do she said he's on his way to come pick me up now i don't want him to find out i'm not there i can't tip my hand so i, I gotta go but I, I, let me think i need to think so she goes home that night and he got a little attitude something something is a little off with him i'm thinking damn did he follow her to the detective's office but he puts the keys, he puts his keys on the table when they come in the house because he's driving her Maserati and stuff. She picks up the keys and puts them in her purse. Next thing you know, she hears him fall out on the floor. She goes upstairs, he's holding, he had been complaining about having some stomach problems. He's holding his stomach, he didn't throw up and all kinds of stuff. They go to the emergency room. He has an intestinal blockage. And the doctor realizes that he has a, a opioid problem. And she asked uh, the wife, she said, so how long has he been on drugs? How long has he been using opium? She was like, or opioid or whatever. And she said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, your husband has a, a drug problem. How, you know, what can you tell me about? Because the pain medicine they were giving him wasn't even putting a dent in his pain because his tolerance level was so high. So she didn't sat there and lied. He didn't lie talking about some. I'm on pain medication for this and for that. I have bad ankle. I got this. I got that. And the doctor said, from where? 
he going to say Iraq. Bitch, you know, everybody know your ass ain't been to Iraq. They know. So, of course, she knows that's a lie. She had already found out that he lied about going to Iraq. So, she tells him, she said, I'm going to go ahead and go down to the chapel so I can pray. And I don't need to be here while they, you know, you're going to go to surgery. I'll be here. I'll be here praying. Honey, she walked right on past that chapel and walked right on to her house. And her and her daughter packed that house up, honey. They cleaned that house out. She got the, um, she got the furniture up out of there. She done packed up all her clothes. She found that money. He had the money. It was hidden in one of his drawers. Then she found another prescription. Honey, she done got it the hell up out of Dodge. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? So next week we're going to find out. Now, I ain't going to tell y'all what happened. I didn't I heard the podcast. I know it goes on next. I ain't going to tell y'all. But this was a really good episode because it showed you a lot about his past and his history. But it also, you starting to see the crazy too. Because you saw how he treated his first wife. See, right now, for the exception of her children and the outside people, he's still treating her pretty good. But honey, wait till he get to that house and that shit is empty. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.